I welcome you to my home. Do come in, have a seat. I have something here to relax you. I think you find it quite a treat. If you find me sounding insane, it's just the absolute talking. It's just the absolute Well, welcome back to the parlor. It's been quite a while since uh, since I've sat and had an absence with you all, and so uh, welcome back. So, I thought I'd kick uh, us back off with these videos here with something that I've seen in the in the media quite a bit over the last few weeks, and it's something that I've been feeling some uh, questions uh, about from from friends. And that is all of these SpaceX contracts that uh, um, uh, that Elon Musk has been winning, and uh, obviously the most public of those is that SpaceX got a contract for doing the moon lander, uh, even though there were uh, other proposals out there, and uh, in, in those that had spent a great deal of time, so they thought. Uh, on these proposals were a little pissed off that uh, while well, SpaceX seemingly was promoted ahead of them uh, even though uh, um, nobody really had made a lander yet. Nobody's actually made a lander since uh, uh, Werner von Braun did back in the, uh, in the 70s. So um, being totally fair, this is pretty much new ground except for those that were involved in that project. Well, we learned an awful lot about landing on the moon uh, from doing it and also from projects that have happened since then. And again, anybody that's been kind of following along with the bouncing ball here realizes that even today, that is not an easy thing to do to get something to, to land on the moon. It's simply not. There, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that can go wrong with getting it down and then obviously getting it back up. So there's a lot a lot of things to work out. So why was why was Tesla pretty much handed this this project? And it all seemed to come down to money. But I know a lot of you like to see me yank the the. Uh, cover off of the crystal ball and, and look peer into the future. But this video is really more about trying to remove some of the mystery behind that rather than peering into the future and trying to make a lot of guesses. So with that said, what we have with SpaceX winning these contracts really doesn't have anything to do with the actual hardware. Again, we talked a little bit about the uh, uh, the, the lander, uh, again, another very notable recent one was that they got a, a very lucrative communications grant to make satellites. Again, propping up the uh, Starlink missions that they've been doing. And, and a lot of the reasons for SpaceX getting these grants has to do with the fact that, well, they're, they're actually doing a lot of this testing. And that really, that really speaks to the heart of why they're getting these contracts. So, it's a little tongue in cheek because I want to drive home the fact that we're not really talking about any specific piece of software. We're going to look at this not in terms of, of anything that's really happening, but in terms of a fanciful thing, a toaster, or in this case, a space toaster. So, this is just my way of showing you how this could be anything. It doesn't really matter whether it's a lander or a piece of communications device or a, uh, a telescope or whatever you want to imagine that it is. So we'll go ahead and imagine that it's a space toaster. So initially you'd think, okay, well, the, the first companies to go to would be Cuisinart or uh, uh, some other company that makes toasters. But the important thing to remember about these contracts is that they're success-based. And so when you look at it, the idea is, is that you actually do ultimately want a space toaster at the end of this. And so if you are 
engaging in an earthbound company that makes earthbound toasters, there's going to have to be a whole lot of engineering uh, that goes on to try and test your space toaster. You're going to have to start off with a regular toaster, then you're going to have to build an enclosure, then you're going to have to figure out some way to power it, then you're going to have to figure out some way that it doesn't uh, conflict with your operating environment, uh, all of these things that, that you're going to have to imagine happen in space. Or you can give the contract to somebody that does what SpaceX does, rockets. So the point that I'm going to be driving home here is, is that making a space toaster, a successful space toaster, doesn't have anywhere near as much to do with the toaster part as it does to do with the space part. And that is where SpaceX has this huge leg up over any company that's going to say they can produce anything for space. Because NASA is now having to look at and be faced with the reality that SpaceX is very soon going to be launching rockets and rockets and rockets and rockets and rockets because it doesn't take them very long or cost them very much to put not just one space toaster in orbit, but a whole payload full of space toasters. So what they can then do is make a, a huge number of iterations and send them up to find out what problems they see, how, uh, how different calculations have gone, it actually physically test something. There's a, an old adage that, that, that says that one actual test is worth a thousand expert opinions, and that is exactly where SpaceX finds themselves. So there is one other underlying thing that I want to mention, and that was really kind of why SpaceX got any notoriety in, in all of this at all. And that is that NASA was very concerned that with all of their efforts through Lockheed Martin and Boeing and all the other pl major players, that initially, because SpaceX didn't get any kind of contracts to deal with you know, the Artemis program or anything to do with going back to the moon, Elon Musk's response to that was really pretty shocking to NASA, and that was, well, that's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go anyway. And so as soon as they said that, and Musk put his dusty footprint on the head of the then administrator of, of NASA, then they had a problem, because if, after all of their assurances to the general public, the taxpayers that are uh, giving them money to go ahead and produce this, if after all of that they wind up with these absolute disasters like Boeing nearly losing a, uh, a spacecraft from a, a software er error because they were trying to rush the, the program or heaven forbid should you wind up losing an astronaut in, you know, in all of this, and then have SpaceX a private company which received no money from anything other than Starlink or other uh, endeavors, Tesla, uh, uh, th th then suddenly SpaceX beats all of the heavy hitters and for all the tax money that you put into it, they're the ones that succeed. And so I think NASA found that there was a huge danger in having that be the case. Oh, okay, so then all of a sudden it turned into, well, we have to engage them in some way. And so then you kind of saw these baby steps to try and engage uh, um, SpaceX. Well, all the while, SpaceX is not stopping in the design of their lander. And that also then had to be taken into account by NASA. It was something that they just could not ignore. The fact that Regardless of the fact that they didn't have any contracts for this, they were still going to go ahead and design something designed to land on and take off from the moon with people on it. They didn't want to become second to that, and so then they wound up adopting that. Again, not because SpaceX had any expertise with making landers. They did that because SpaceX has an expertise, a proven expertise, in orbital rated hardware that they're already sending cargo and people up to the International Space Station. So it, it's not possible for NASA to view SpaceX as some kind of a joke, they're not. And so in answer to that, they gave them this contract to, do, uh, to make a lander that they were going to make anyway. So now you fast forward that, you have all of these 
other players complaining that then they're not getting this money and they're not being able to, well, they haven't really proven any core competency. Jeff Bezos is a joke. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, really rooting for Blue Origin, and, and I am too, in a way, but they really do need to get off the pot. They need to actually put some hardware in orbit. They need to actually show core competency. This rivalry between them was fine when they were both spitting out CGI, competing CGI versions of their rocket. But that's no longer possible now that Elon Musk is doing landings of what is going to be his starship. He's going to toss one into orbit and see how it does coming back in, hypersonic. And so these are things that are going to be happening within a matter of weeks, at the very least, months. And where's, where's Blue Origin in all this? Well, he's going to be sending himself up in his suborbital dildo to go up and drop back down. Well, been there, done that. Okay, so now let's try and you know move this forward. So really, they don't have anything to base core competency on to show that they're the ones that should be able to, to do this lunar lander hardware, whereas um, SpaceX has the space part down. SpaceX doesn't care how many of these rockets they crash on the moon. There's not gonna be anybody in them. And so then they'll figure that out and they're gonna figure that out much cleaner and much quicker than people who are earthbound and have to take their time meticulously engineering every bit out of it. Same thing with the space toaster. Launch a lot of them. Figure it out. They did that with the uh, uh, with their Starlink satellites. The, the satellites that are being launched today look nothing like satellites that were launched initially because of everything that they found out along the way. How did they find that out? They're launching these satellites 80 at a time. That's how they found it out. And so when you look at SpaceX in the future as they start to roll on and get these contracts, that should be the number one thing in your mind is that SpaceX isn't being given these contracts on the basis of their expertise in any one other area. They're being given these contracts because of the space part. So, hope you found that interesting. It was something that uh, uh, I've been thinking about for uh, a while now, and I thought that was a good way to kind of welcome us all back to the parlor now that I'm starting to get things fired back up. And so, uh, till next time, see you soon.